<laughs> oh Lord, y'all pray for me. Hey everybody. <laughs> Amen. It's good to be here this morning. You know, there's so much going on and uh, uh, so many people are hurting and so many people are suffering and it just behooves us to uh, stay in uh, a spirit, just have a spirit of prayer uh, in our hearts because uh, it is praying time. Uh, uh, the Bible says men ought to always pray and not to faint. Praying can't do nothing but help you. Let me just say it like that. And so I just appreciate God for his goodness and Appreciate God for prayer warriors. I thank God that somebody prayed for me. Thank God that somebody prayed for me. I appreciate that. You know, when I couldn't even get a prayer out of my mouth, when I couldn't get a prayer through, somebody was praying for me. I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. I thank God for that. If you have your Bibles, open up with me, please, to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. So if you kind of recall, we kind of uh, did chapters 8 and 10 in concert because they were talking about basically the same thing. And he, uh, he um, was talking about, he interrupted that with um, uh, just an a, a illustration of himself when he was talking about uh, is it okay to eat food that's been sacrificed to idols. So uh, we've kind of basically done that. And so now we're going to go on to uh, chapter 11. And uh, we started out, he says this, be ye followers of me even as I also am of Christ. So one of the biggest problems in the church, I think we started on this last Sunday, uh, one of the biggest problems in the Corinthian church, Sister Jackie, was disorder. Mm. Disorder. Disorder. When they came together for their meetings, as they would gather <laughs> together, then there got to be disorder. Because we talked about how, uh, we talked about freedom, we talked about liberty and how glad we are to have our liberty in the Lord. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yeah. There is liberty. But what had happened is the Corinthian church had taken that liberty, and they were not exercising discipline with the liberty. They had become irresponsible with their liberty. I said this, y'all, somebody's watching you. Somebody's watching you. No matter what you think, somebody's watching you. And so they're looking at you and they're just waiting. They're just waiting to be able to say something. I thought you went over to Manasseh. I thought you, is Pastor Bland your uh, pastor? Uh, what is he teaching y'all over there? So, you know, we have to uh, exercise our liberty with discipline. So what happened is they got, uh, it was just, just disorder. When I say disorder, it was chaotic. And so we said that God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. What would happen in the church if there was not an order of things? Let's just, anybody. Confusion? Confusion. Okay, so you have to have an order of things. The order starts with the leader. The order starts with the leader. And so uh, we're looking at the leader when things get out of order. We're looking at the leader. You know, you need to say something. You need to do something because we didn't come here for this. Lady Deborah, when you were talking, I thought of something I hadn't thought of before. And that is uh, in Galatians 5 and 22. <clears throat> it says, but the fruit of the Spirit, and one of the fruit of the Spirit is temperance. Temperance. And I was thinking last night on my way home, uh, my greatest strength is I don't do what I can. And that's a sign of maturity, and that's discipline, that you don't do what you can. And I, I always kind of, because I hate being broke, I kind of bring everything around the money. Mm -hmm. And that is, if you buy everything you can, broke is in your future. It, it's, 
it's in your future if you don't learn how to if you, and so then if I am not temperate moderation in all things mm. Yeah. Mm. you see mm -hmm. if I'm not temperate then I'm not operating in the spirit. I'm operating in the flesh. <clears throat> because the Bible tells us that's what comes from the spirit. The spirit will restrain you and keep. And you have, you have, to, you have to do that. It, it comes whatever it is. Sex, m uh, money, uh, friendship. You might be very, very good friends with somebody. But you got to know when to let them go where they go. And you go where you'll go. You don't just, you run out when you just don't use any kind of temp. So... We don't have to worry about it. If we allow the spirit to lead us, the spirit will bring temperance. That's all. Amen. That's a good point. Thank you, Pastor Ben. Tem temperance, uh, moderation in all things. Moderation in all things. We, you and I can have a conversation about that. Amen. Moderation in all things. Praise God. We just thank God that the word will just find you. Want it? <laughs> Want the word find you? Amen. I thank God for the word of God. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so Paul began to uh, give them compliments in the beginning because he was getting ready to set them out towards the end. So he had something, you know, so he started it out with a praise that I, now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Ordinances in this context are just traditions and there are some traditions that he passed down. You know, they had a tradition of passing down the word orally. They had a tradition of that. And so uh, Paul said, I thank God that uh, you keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is who? Christ. Is Christ. And the head of the woman is who? Amen. And the head of Christ is who? God. God. Okay. So we can see here that that's the established order of things. Uh, I know things have gotten out of order, and sometimes things are out of order, but this is the established order of things. And so um, many times uh, what we want to understand is that um, this order, you don't usurp this order, okay? Because when you do, that's when things begin to go awry. That's when things begin to go awry. So since uh, he... Um, So when, 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 when we talk about it, the reason that he has to bring this up is because the women had, had not exercised discipline with their liberty. They were glad to be free. We know, in, we know in Christ Jesus there's no male or female, Jew or Greek, right? Okay, so we're one body. That, and we're one body. But the women were glad to be free, you know, because it was just, you know, Absolutely. Okay, so, so thank you for bringing it up. You had to think about where they were. They were in the East. The Eastern culture was very repressive for women. Okay? Is it a, like, you don't be talking out in public. If there's something you want to know, you wait till you get home and ask your husband. That's the kind of society that they lived in. But uh, the women, as we know, the Bible says to let all things be done how? Decently and in order. If we didn't learn any scripture at all, we learned that scripture. This is a principle. As we said, this is a principle that God follows in his creation. All things are to be done decently and in order. And so... Uh, when we talk about this particular subject, sometimes it's hard for people to broach because it brings into it the subject of submission. Submission. And so uh, it is, when we talk about things being done in order, it is a matter of submission to rank under. And so here's the thing I want you to understand about this whole passage and about us in society today that rank uh, has to do with order and authority, but not with ability and value. Because that's what people would think. They think, oh, no, I can't be submissive. I cannot be submissive like that because I got something to say. Or I want, you know, I want to be heard. I want to be heard. That's not, that doesn't mean 
that you can't be heard, but that's, it's an order of things. It's an order of things. So some of the women in the church were assuming more freedom than they should have. And so, uh, and also, when we get over to talk about the Lord's Supper, there was a disorder when they, that, that came up. There was confusion uh, in the use of uh, the spiritual gifts. So, as I said earlier, uh, the faith... Uh, uh, that the believers had brought them a new freedom and Lord Jesus. It was every, we just was happy. Freedom, uh, hope to the women, the children, and to the slaves. As you know, back then, slaves were prevalent. So it taught that all people, regardless of race or sex, were equal before the Creator. And that was good news. That's good news. All people were equal before God and that all believers were one, as I said earlier, were one in Christ. So as we talk here then about this, it says every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. And so, again, remember, we're in we're talking about it. This is a matter of culture. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head for that is even all one as if she were shaven. Okay, so uh, apparently then the women in this society all wore head coverings. They wore head coverings uh, in public. And uh, this included everybody, the Jewish women, the pagan women, and those who were uh, just uh, newfound believers. And so then if you were seen without a head covering, you were seen, you were uh, considered maybe loose or immoral because then remember you also had prostitutes and the prostitutes then they wore their heads shaven. And so the, the reason in this culture then is if you stand up to prophesy, it doesn't mean you know how you, people go around and have something on their head no matter what. You have some, some uh, denominations like that you have some people that just will not, when they come in, they have something on their head. They have something on their head. But in that culture, that's, they did that because that was their culture. And so, <clears throat> for if, a, if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn and shaven, let her be covered. Because you didn't want... You didn't want to think, if, if you're, a, you're prophesying and you see he allowed them, he said, it's okay. They were permitted um, to prophesy. They were permitted to pray, but then it was the way they did it. He didn't want them out in public questioning what was going forth. Uh, if they had something, as I said earlier, to question or to ask, they were to do that at home. They were to do that at home. It's just, 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 just as simple as that. And Lady Deborah, I don't think he had a choice about them prophesying or praying because that was an operation of the Spirit. And so I, exactly as you're explaining it, and, and you know, I, I promise you I do not say this for CC. I, I say it sincerely that I, have, I learned so much in the Lord's Academy. I just wish everybody would come. Because, I mean, this is the nuts, nuts and bolts of it. I mean, it's, in Sunday service, I don't have time to teach like this. I got to try to help you to make it through another day. <laughs> but but, but um, it, it, it was not, I can see from your teaching, that it was not whether a woman could talk or not. It was the order in, in the church. And order starts from the top. And if the top is not in order, then the rest of the house is not in order as well. So thank you for that. Oh, you're so welcome. So, so we go back to the society uh, at that time. They were very jealous over their women. They were jealous over their women. And so there were just some things that they, you know. <laughs> There were some things that then they requ they required basically uh, of their women, and so uh, and and Paul said in order to keep the order then 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 that's what you need to do submit. It's a matter of submission. It's a matter of submission for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. So Paul kind of really goes all the way back to Genesis to kind of bring them up to this point 
because you think about when God created, uh, he created um, male, but then he created male and female. And so there is a man and the woman came out of the man. And so uh, it's God's order of things. God has a, uh, an order of things and that order, it goes all the way through uh, creation. And so, um, no more than you have to honor your parents. It's no more, it's, it's just a simple order of things. It, it, I mean, your parents are no more than you, but God has placed it where you honor your mother and your father. You esteem them higher than yourself because that's his order of things. Absolutely, absolutely. And so it says, for as a woman is of the man, I'm in verse 12, even so is a man also by the woman, but all things of God. Judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. I, I was uh, saying to someone the other day that my mother always said that your hair is your glory. Your hair is your glory. And so uh, for you, that might be uh, how Mother Minnie looks, how Sister Tara looks, how Sister Annetta looks, how Sister Jackie looks. It's your, it's your glory. It's your glory. It's your glory. Uh, I, the, the hair that we have, Jackie, we had to do the best we can. That's what I'm talking, really, to make it presentable for us. And, and I'm, you know, I'm thankful for the natural hair cra uh, 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 craze that is going on. And it has never been a craze for me because natural hair is what it is. It's your natural hair. And it's beautiful. And I think we should all embrace, uh, embrace that it's, it's who we are. And we should embrace that. So whatever it is for you, if you want to wear a bone straight, if you want to wear it curled up, if you want to wear it knotted up like mine, it's your glory. It's your glory. And so uh, we thank God for that liberty. We thank God for that liberty. And so uh, now they had uh, also disorder when it came to the Lord's Supper. So how many of you, have you heard that term before, the Lord's Supper? Have you heard uh, it referred to as what else? Circumment, what else? Communion, Eucharist. Eucharist, anything else? Okay, all right. So here's the thing. Back then in the early church, and remember we're in the early church stage. We're in the early church stage. Back then, they had a custom of combining what they call a love feast. That was like a shared supper. And uh, they combined what we commonly refer to as the Lord's Supper. They combined those. So the roots of that can be traced back to Exodus when they were getting ready to come out of uh, Egypt. So let's go all the way back over to Exodus 12. Are you there? That's it, us 12. Uh huh. And I'm going to start at the 43rd verse. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. And one house shall it be eaten, thou shalt not carry forth out of the flesh or broad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. 
and he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. I'll just stop right there. Let's go back over to uh, 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. So um, it goes back. That's the root of it. But then also, of course, it goes back to the time where Jesus and his disciples shared in a final meal together. So I keep saying meal. It's a meal. It's a meal. It's a meal. But it's been turned into something totally different from that. It's, it's, been, been, it's, it's been turned into a distraction. It's, it's a, we, anytime you turn a reality into a ritual, you take away the value of it. Say marriage. If you turn marriage into a ring, you've missed it. Marriage is a lot more than, than, than a ring. Any married man that will not jump in front of his wife and, 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 and give his life for her, he don't deserve to be married. Because the Bible tells us that the husband love your wife even as Christ loved the church. That's marriage. Marriage is, is that you don't, you, your wife is more important than you. You want to protect her. You're going to, you, you, everything, anything for her. It's not a ring. And the, 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 the communion is supposed to be the unity of the body. We're supposed to believe the same thing. We're supposed to have love for one another. We're supposed to uh, love one another. And so instead of loving one another, we drink juice and eat crackers. It's not the same. So when you were, let's, thank you, Pastor Bland, for that. So, so how were you made to think about this, this, when you were coming along? I looked at it as my ticket to heaven. Anybody else look at it like that? Or? And it, it, to take, take communion and... I was supposed to, if I had any sin in me or anything like that, ask the Lord to forgive me before I take it, take it worthily. Uh, and uh, I looked at it like it was really something. I was in the AME church, and we used to come up. They would have it up there, you know, and we would come up in uh, groups. As these go, let others come. And we would come, but they would tell us beforehand, if you got anything in you, whatever, and then there would be some people that'd be so convicted, they were, I'm not taking communion this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't none of me. I go fake it. I wasn't, oh, I'm all right. Or, if, or, or, or Brother Arthur, if you got anything in your heart against anybody, go to them right now and ask them to forgive you. Well, now, you sitting in there with something in your heart. You got something in your heart against your husband, but then, you know, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Brother Wade. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here in 1 Corinthians. Uh -huh. It's here. The, the scripture they read, uh, I'll just read it to you now. Uh, this is what Paul said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. I'll go back to a comment that uh, Pastor Bland made earlier. So, yeah, I had those same things when I, I was growing in. I was scared to take it. And, well, you know, it was forever before I even got baptized, for real. And then, uh, you know, so you weren't allowed to take it if you hadn't been baptized. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if, uh, <laughs> like, like it was said, you know, if you felt like you had something in your heart or you had something against somebody or if you had a, a wrong thought, 
even if you had a wrong thought. What they said were you were drinking unworthy. But it, if we look at it, when we look at the words, they're kind of two different words, unworthily and unworthy. Of course, unworthily uh, is a derivative, but it is uh, an adverb as opposed to talking about you being unworthy because that makes you feel like you're worth less. Totally not what that means. Totally not what that means. And so, again, they, they had a, 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 a um, it was customary, a tradition for them to come together to eat, communion, communion, fellowship. They, that was, this was part of their fellowship. They came together to eat, uh, and then, uh, okay, so they go from the love feast to uh, the Lord's Supper. Uh, it gave them an opportunity to show love to the saints when they came together. So there's food involved, if you, you get what I'm saying. However, they began to abuse this coming together because any time, and I said this last Sunday, I believe, any time you have a group of people, Brother uh, Jeff, cliques automatically evolve. Clicks automatically evolve. And so here in Corinth, then you had some people who had money. They were able to buy food, the kind of food that they wanted to, when they wanted to. And then you have some who had no money and they couldn't buy food. Well, if you're having communion and fellowship and you see a brother over here with no food, then what is your obligation or responsibility? You feed them. But they were separated like that. And so they had caused a big uh, faction. They had caused factions. It, it was to, it, they were embarrassing those who didn't have what the other ones had. And you never, ever want to be guilty of that. You remember, all you got to do is go back in your mind and think about when you didn't have. And, and how you have not always had what you have and how it feels when you are embarrassed because you don't have what everyone else had. And so uh, Paul condemned that. He said, you know, you're coming together and uh, this one, uh, this one has this and y'all coming together and y'all eat, eating and you're drinking and you're getting drunk and you're being merry and you got some over here whose stomach is just... Just growling. Brother Alex? Absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. You know, they do it under the guise of, uh, I guess, obligation or, or giving to the Lord, but you know. It, it, it's, an, it's, it's a very effective, hey, Deacon, very effective fundraising uh, tool. Yeah. Um, you know, they would put it like this. You don't give to be seen, but you should be seen giving. And so what they would do is... Uh, what I've seen the big, big, big shots do, T.D. Jakes did at that one conference I went, I never went anymore, uh, come up here and put it in my hand. Yeah. So they get to go on stage. They get to be seen with him. And it's people we love to be recognized. We love attention, you see? And so uh, some people, and you know, I, we have it even here. People take advantage of the fact that we don't. So they don't get nothing. During the pandemic, yeah, it took a couple of years and everything, folks ain't put nothing. They, they don't, the light bill going on every month, things going on, they just, just, but what helps me is, I know you can't make people care about what they don't care about. So I'm not gonna worry about one minute. You know, you try to make somebody care, they don't care. It, it's just like that. So 
I think, I'm going to give it back to you, Lady Deborah. I think it comes down to a point of whether or not you're going to let God take care of it or whether you're going to take care of it. And when you're trying to take care of it, then you start coming up with schemes and all that. And that's what that is. It's not so much to embarrass the folks that don't, but it's to motivate the folks that do. And so, honey, that's the reason that I know sometimes people come over here and say, no, nah, they're not going to come over here because the stage ain't big enough. They want to be recognized, and they want to get in that line to let everybody know. And they tell them to hold your tithe envelope over. You don't get to do that over here, no. you know? But Jesus said this. He said, you know, you know, when you do stuff to be seen of men, you already have your reward. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Alex. Thank you, Pastor Blaine. Anybody else? So he says, for now, uh, he says, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. <laughs> I partly believe it. <laughs> He said, for there must be also heresies among you, heresies. You know, heresies are people, uh, people come up with their own way of doing things. And not only that, they come up with their own way of doing things, but then you have a, a diversity of opinions or difference of opinions from what Paul said. That's what he began to praise them for, for following the ordinances that he had passed down. But then when you come up with your own ordinance, that's something totally different. And so then you have heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper. And one is hungry and another is drunken. What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? Let me say this, just to show you how it's a distraction. And that Satan is a master at distracting you. Show you it's a distraction. Uh, some, a lot of times people hear me preach a funeral and everything, and I always cut it short because I, I didn't come to preach a sermon. But, but, oh, my God, I didn't know that man could preach like that. Then they want to come back. When y'all have a church, and I'm thinking about this one lady, and she came, she sat right over here, she came, and she was fine until she found out we didn't have the Lord's Supper, we didn't give circumcision or whatever, and I would have gave her some juice and crackers, I think we still got something in the back. <laughs> I would have, I mean, it didn't hurt her, but, you know, that's where she ain't been back. She, she couldn't, you, you know, you passed up all of this about some juice and some crackers. Does it? Well, now I've seen this right here. I've seen uh, grandparents get upset because their grandchildren wasn't getting baptized. And I was visiting a church and I walked in on some of my, my children over there sitting down on the morning banks with white rags around their head and stuff like that. And they got baptized, you know. But, uh, I don't see where it hurt them or helped them in that, but you're right. And it could, <laughs> I don't have anything against any of it, but this is what I don't want to do, Deacon. I don't want to do, I love y'all. I don't want to mislead you. And I don't want to do something to make you think that this is going to help you. Yeah. Ain't nothing going to help you but the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. If you put your trust yeah. in the blood, then it, then it, that right there will seal your way to heaven. And I don't want to, Lady Deborah, you said this, I'm going to give it back to you, Deborah. Okay. She said she would, she would never contradict me before the children. But when we got together, she would tell me, she said, Banda, you're sending mixed messages. Because yeah. I'm a softy. Yeah. I would try to be disciplined and say this right here and there, but then I would go back on it. And she would tell me, say, you're, you're sending missed messages. I don't ever, and that's one reason I don't allow everybody, a lot of different ministers here, because I don't want to confuse you. We say grace, by grace through faith plus nothing, and then I allow somebody to come in and preach and tell you, you got to do this and got to do that. And he's sitting up there like, well, I thought pastor said such and such. So you need one message, and you need the truth. Yeah. So Thank you, Pastor Glenn. Brother Alex?
So blessing, we didn't have no little girl. Because I'd have gone and guess her for that, but it might look good. That's something, yeah. Well, so now what they do is when they get together, they gang up on me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it, but it's all right. I'll be the bad guy. It's okay. So Spurgeon said this. I, I thought this was interesting. Y'all tell me what you think. I'm going to read the quote. Can you go right there? He has laid down no rule. This was in a message he preached back in 1888 about the Lord's Supper. said, he has laid down no rule as to when we shall break bread, but the custom was certainly to break it on the first day of the week, the custom then. And I think oftener, for it seems to me that they broke bread from house to house. It was not a ceremony that required a minister or a priest. When believers were together, they broke bread in memory of Christ, any two or three of them, and so they remembered him. So what he was saying basically was, if you're in your home, Wherever you are, if, you, if you've been saved by the blood of Jesus, taking um, bread and wine, if you've been saved by the blood of Jesus, how often do you remember him? You remember him at every opportunity you get. You, and you know what? People, when they get in their religion, are such a stickler. Uh, when I was doing that, and that was the first few years until God showed me better, I went over to this guy's house. He wasn't even a member of the church, uh, of our church, another church. And, but he was at home, and I know his pastor wasn't going to do it. So I went over there to give him certain, because that's what I've been taught. I went there to give him circumvent. And I think I gave him the bread before the juice or the juice before the bread or whatever. He stopped me. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to do it like this right here. You know, he's so into how. And the thing about it was they didn't do no juice. That was wine. It was real wine. And we just going to get be a stickler. Ain't none of y'all doing it right because it was wine. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. There wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't outline that it has to be done you give it to a preacher the preacher gives it to you or you give it to her you know what i'm saying that's some, something we have come up with it's something we have come up with you give it and you know you you make a uh, you make a ceremony out of it you make a ritual out of it that's something we have done a lot of Yeah. How do you know when you ain't studying the word? Yeah. That's something we have done. So I'm gonna say this, I got your brother uh uh Alex. So it's not a requirement to be to be saved, yeah. nor is it a requirement to stay saved. It's a shared meal. We have saved so much money because we hadn't had to buy this church stuff. They selling stuff, they say you did mm. it just you know, so just you know. How are we saved? We're saved by grace, through faith, and we're redeemed by the shed blood of Jesus. Brother Alex? I just wanted to go back to what you were saying about the rituals in church. Uh, a friend of mine's uh, invited me to a Jehovah Witness Church ceremony. And at the end of it, they started passing a ball of regular wine, I guess. And I said to my, hey, y'all don't have no cups? <laughs> I didn't buy it to buy it, but hey, man, y'all drink it out of it? Come on. Oh, Lord. Look, they have, they have people that have died because they won't take a blood transfusion. Yeah. They'll let their children die because of their belief that you don't mix blood. And I, they scared me to death one day because I had to come up front for something. And I took my purse and set it on this table, and they went to holler. You go, get that purse off. Yeah. So, so, uh, so it's like, yeah. I'm, and I've, 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 I've seen and, and I've done that before. I know exactly what you're saying. So it's almost like that table becomes an altar. Look, when I first started preaching, I was a fiery evangelist and stuff like that. I was somewhere preaching revival. I stood up on the folk table. 
Never to let you know I never was asked no more to come. And we know he did it too, don't we? <laughs> we know he did. We're trying to get all these chairs fixed up. Pastor Bland won't stay out of the chairs. But God is good, isn't he? Yes. Amen. Say amen for Brother Arthur. Amen. Come on, get a Lord of hand praise to everybody. Amen.